Who should you be buying in the Atlanta Falcons offense this offseason? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuke. Welcome into the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, everybody. I am Kate Majuk. You can follow me on Twitter at FFBallBlast. And as always, I am joined by Marcus Mosier. You can follow him on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. We are continuing to knock out our team-by-team dynasty buy-sell previews this week, breaking down every single NFL roster, keeping on with the NFC South this week. But You know, if you've missed other shows, don't forget, go back, listen, um, and be sure to subscribe. Leave those five star reviews so that you don't miss another episode because we will hit every single team in the NFL and we do not want you to miss a single thing. Marcus, today we're going to be talking about the Atlanta Falcons and I'm kind of interested in this team, Mm. but I don't think that you are so much. So can you start us off? I know you usually throw it to me first, but do you have any buys on this roster? Oh man, this is, this is a tricky one. I mean, not really. There's only a couple players that I'm interested in this offense at all. And and the first one would be Drake London, just because I think he's going to get so much volume. Uh, But we've talked about him enough. So let's pick somebody different. How about Brian Edwards, who the Falcons traded for this offseason? He's going to be the number two receiver for this team. Drake London's going to start. It's Brian Edwards. And then after him, Kate, I mean, it's not good. It's on Tate, Geronimo Allison, Frank Darby, uh, Demir Bird, uh, Zacchaeus is their slot receiver. At least with Brian Edwards, we've seen him be a multi-year starter. He's a pretty good route runner. He's got some production to his name, and he's still a pretty young player. He, he's not all that old, and you can get him pretty cheap. I just think this is a team that's going to be down in a lot of games. Their defense is awful. He could get 80 to 90 targets and be a, a nice wide receiver four, maybe a low-end wide receiver three. Yeah, I think everybody kind of forgets about Brian Edwards. Like That was one of the... The low key side or low key trades uh, in this off season, but I mean Brian Edwards was the dynasty darling just not mm-hmm. that long ago. Uh, we all thought that he was headed for this monster breakout, uh, and things didn't really pan out with the the Las Vegas Raiders. But things don't often pan out with the Las no. Vegas Raiders. I, I, so. I should add one of the reasons why they made this trade wasn't because. I mean, because he was cheap. It was because they literally didn't have another receiver that they trusted to start, right? They just needed somebody who had some starting experience and was competent. And that's why they went out and got him, which means to me, Kate, he's going to play a million snaps, right? He's going to he's gonna be their week one starter, probably, I mean, probably as the X receiver. I know that's where Drake London is supposed to start, but I kind of would be shocked if he does. I, I, there's just a chance that he gets peppered with targets early in the season. And if he makes good on those targets, he's only 23 years old. Maybe, maybe something happens. He, you know, he's going into the third year of his rookie contract. There's still a lot of reasons to be excited about him. I mean, I think people forget about the prospect himself. I don't think we can really look at his time in the NFL and consider that uh, when we're making this player evaluation, I think you have to go back to, what he, what, what your thoughts were and your evaluation of him as a rookie. But I mean, super intriguing prospect, like not hard to see why the, the Raiders drafted him in the third round, uh, has a breakout age of 17.8. That is in the Mm hundredth. That is, that is period the hundredth percentile. Um, like you cannot do better than that. He broke out before he was of legal age to join the military, right? Is that yes. the rule? Yes. I don't know. Okay. Um, yeah, he broke out before uh, he could buy a pack of cigarettes, but I think that just changed to 21 maybe. I don't know. I'm not up on my illegal sub or my legal <laughs> substances, <laughs> but uh, but I mean, even like a uh, college dominator rating, he was so, so productive uh, in college, 95th percentile. He accumulated 
literally almost 50% of his entire team's productions uh, at the University of South Carolina. Like, this dude was uh, an analytics dream. Do you believe in second chances? I think this is a, a really nice pick. And you know what, Marcus? The the market right now for Brian Edwards, wide receiver 73. Like, yeah. Yeah. being valued right around uh, Hassan Haskins, backup running back for the, the Tennessee Titans, J.D. McKissick, um, mm-hmm. Tyquan Thornton, um, who – everybody's still trying to figure out how he got drafted as high as he did. Um, There's just a a lot to like at no literally virtual, virtually no risk whatsoever with Brian Edwards. Yeah. um, I would say that one of the reasons I do like Brian Edwards is he helped get me on the uh, NBC rotor wire or the uh, NBC edge little player feed because last year when I, I, I asked John Gruden about Brian Edwards, he compared him to Jerry Rice and, to uh, in certain moments <laughs> that made made waves on Twitter, but no, I I do like Brian Edwards, and it's not like he was a massive disappointment last year. Like he had some really nice games. It's just that offense was so up and down, and his role in the offense was kind of up and down. I do want to let, let people remember he got hurt during the pre-draft process. Otherwise, he could have been late first, early second round pick. This is not somebody who doesn't have talent. We did see him for the first two years of his career. He's averaged 17 yards per catch. And we've seen some big games from him. He just needs a more consistent role in the offense. Um, He's never had a game with more than six targets. That's going to change in Atlanta. He's going to have plenty of games with six or more targets there. So if you want a dart throw that costs you essentially nothing, why not? Yeah, I like it. I I, I think that's fair. Okay. Uh, We're going to move on to some dynasty cells because this whole offense is kind of a sell for me uh, uh before, wait a minute wait well, a minute I, I, i'll let you get to your buy i'll let you get to your buy don't worry uh, yeah. i just want to tell you guys about rock auto our good friends at rock auto with the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models it's now impossible for your local auto parts store to stock up on all the parts you need rock auto has everything from engine control modules and brake parts motor oil and even new carpet Whether it's for your classic or your daily driver, get everything you need in a few easy clicks delivered directly to your door. Best of all, prices at rockauto.com are always reliably low, and they're the same for professionals and do-it-yourselfers. Why spend up to twice as much for the same parts? Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right locked on in the How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com today. So if you follow the structure of these shows over the last month, you know that we do buy, sell, and hold. I'm, I'm actually going to flip it really quick because I got a feeling that our hold is going to be the same. Is your hold Kyle Pitts? Yes. Okay. So we I, I don't want to spend too much time on Kyle Pitts because if you have Kyle Pitts in a dynasty league. Everybody it, talks about Kyle Pitts. I don't like we don't need to talk about Kyle Pitts. No, it, he is his ears ring every time uh, yeah. somebody says the word Kyle Pitts and they literally have not stopped ringing since – he was drafted as a wee baby. He, he's tight at number one across the board. He had a fantastic rookie season. I think the second best rookie season of all time for a tight end. He's going to get absolutely peppered with targets this year. They're going to move him all around. He's got a great chance to finish as a tight end one. We're, oh, we're not, we don't that need to say nice. anything more, right? Ass brief. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Give us your dynasty buy for the Atlanta Falcons. Or, well, you don't need to say it like that. Well, I'm Marcus. Just, I, this is an offense I just really want no part of other than some some Drake London and a lot of Kyle Pitts. Uh, I'm tired. Like this probably isn't going to come as a surprise to any of our long term listeners, because when we broke down this prospect in the rookie process, I was all over him like like uh, black on a tea kettle. I don't know what whatever the phrase is. Um, Desmond Ritter quarterback, uh, soon to be starting quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons, uh, who nobody wants any freaking part of, which is insane. Uh, Desmond Ritter's, uh, competing with Marcus Mariota and his rookie of the offensive rookie of the year yards are plus 1400. That is, that is worse than James Cook running back for the Buffalo Bill or sorry, he's tied with James Cook. Buffalo uh, running back like 
I think this is absolutely insane because even with Kenny Pickett, obviously the, the Steelers love Kenny Pickett, but I think that Desmond Ritter has a realistic chance to start the most games out of any uh, rookie quarterback this season. He was drafted in the third round, but like he wasn't projected there. That's not where people were thinking he was drafted. All of these quarterbacks were just forced down the board, period. Um, like Malik Willis, projected top 10 pick, fell to the third round past Desmond Ritter. I've loved everything about Desmond Ritter for a really long time. Former three-star recruit, four-year starter at Cincinnati. It, he is just a winning quarterback period. Uh, three of the best four seasons that the school has ever had was with Desmond Ritter at quarterback. Uh, he's athletic. I think he's got a really solid mind. Um, I think he has really nice knowledge of the game. He's capable of throwing down the field, though he's not like, you're not going to say he's a gunslinger like a Josh Allen, but I think he's got all the mentals and I think he's got all of the uh, athleticism and decision-making abilities so that this guy's going to see the field very soon. Um, and I, I think it's really hard to find a uh, starting quarterback this cheap um, who is going to get opportunities and snaps. Cause Marcus, I like, I don't know um, how you feel about your fellow Marcus, Marcus Mariota. That's, yep. um, you guys are on the same team, mm -hmm. but I mean, just not, not good guys in the last two full seasons that he played he totaled 24 passing touchdowns yeah, yeah. He, he played almost 30 uh, 29 games of 24 passing touchdowns 23 interceptions um like he was one of those quarterbacks that put you at in like the eight and eight column like every single season but it, it didn't really feel like he was the one to get you there i do think that uh, Desmond Ritter just has so much to like. I think he would have been much more hyped in this pre-draft process if it weren't for his, uh, like overall draft story and like his, his high school recruitment process. Like yeah. he's, he's an underdog. He was not, uh, touted like Trevor Lawrence from the moment he was born out of his mother's womb. Um, this dude clawed his way to the NFL and, um, has absolutely crushed it at Cincinnati. Like the, the teams he lost to, like he, he came pretty close uh, to, to winning some college football playoff championships, but he lost to teams like Georgia and Alabama. Like those, those are the top dogs here. Um, I just, I don't understand why we're not all rushing to buy a, a, the future starter for uh, probably 2022 starter for the Atlanta wow. Falcons, especially given his, um, athletic profile. You didn't get to see quite as much of it uh, in his time at Cincinnati, but I think the right coach can completely unlock that. And you've got yourself a Konami code quarterback. A couple of things I want to just add in here on uh, Marcus Mario. So this morning, uh, according to ESPN's Michael Rostein, he said he believes Marcus Mariota is far ahead of rookie quarterback Desmond Ritter on the depth chart. Rostein said a training camp, uh, it said a training camp or preseason injury would be the only way that Ritter finds himself under center for Atlanta in week one. Is that, does that concern you at all? No, okay. no, it, uh, it, I don't think he needs to start week one to, to get well, immediate value. We don't it, always it, want our, our quarterbacks to start week one, but I, I, agree. I do I agree. think a hundred percent once Marcus Mariota gets onto the field, they're going to have some question marks. I'd well, and this is what I would say about Marcus Mar Mariota. The, the injury part's a real thing, though, okay? Because last year, in week one, Marcus Mariota came in on the first drive of the game uh, it, it, against the Ravens, and he ran a quarterback option, which he took at 31 yards, which, I mean, he's still an incredible athlete. Pulled his quad on, the, on that run, missed the next six weeks on the IR list. Come He's banged up again, doesn't play for a couple more weeks. And that was just his 2021 season. In 2020, he was on the injured reserve the first six weeks of the season with a shoulder injury. And then he was inactive because he wasn't healthy enough to play. And then and then he got banged up again in practice. So like he might be far ahead of Ritter the player, 
But the injury part's a real thing. Like that's one of the reasons why he got benched in Tennessee is outside of his play is he had a hard time staying healthy. And like, just for the record, like I, I, as a reminder to all these people, as we're talking about these injuries that occurred with the Raiders, they were as a backup quarterback. Like that is what, that is what is like, he's not sustaining these injuries in like heavy game action. Um, He's sustaining them as, as the backup quarterback. I, I just think the opportunity is a hundred percent going to be there. Even if like, even without injury, I think like, I mean, we're in, uh, we just completed June. Like Mm -hmm. we've got all of training camp. I think there's plenty of time. Like, obviously you're going to feel more comfortable with uh, Marcus Mariota, who's a vet. He's a game manager, but I think Desmond Ritter, like you're going to want to figure out what you have. Cause I have a feeling that this team is going to be bad this year. I don't hot take, um, yeah. but they're going to be in a position to get a quarterback like Bryce long, Bryce young, CJ Stroud. Yep. CJ Stroud. Like you're going to be in position for that. So you need to know, am I like, what do I do with that top pick in 2023? And I don't think you know that until you see what Desmond Ritter could do. Cause he, he could have been in the first round if not all of these guys were pushed down the draft board. Kate, really quickly, one more thing on Mariota's injury history, which could force Ritter on the field. Since 2018, okay, he has started 20 games. So that's over the last four years, 20 total games. Here are all the injuries that he's had since the start of 2018. He had an elbow sprain on September 9, 2018. He had a neck stinger November 18, 2018. He had another neck stinger December 22nd, 2018 that caused him to miss a game. 2020, August 27th, he has a strain peck that caused him the first five games of the season. 2021, August 12th, he has a quad injury that cost him all of training camp and all of preseason. September 13th, 2021, re-aggravates quad injury that cost him seven games. I mean, this is somebody who hasn't had to play a lot and he's still getting banged up. So I even if he starts the first eight games of the season because he's just so much further ahead of Ritter, I, I just don't know. I just don't know if we can count on Mario to ever play a full 16 or 16, 17 games because he's never done it before. The last time he started more than 13 games was 2017, and that was 15. Yeah, I'm I'm not in on Marcus Mario to the player. Um, I think this is like where I would expect most rookies in uh you know heading into July to be. Like yep. I Yep. I'm not freaked out at all, but I think this is like the ultimate buy low opportunity because I would wait. You're I, not- honestly though, I would wait. I because we're gonna get to training camp in preseason. And if Mariota is a starter, people are going to start to bail a little bit. I, I think I would wait. Even people are already before. bailed. That's what's crazy. Um, I'm crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Let's go out, let's go out and trade for Ritter right now at our dynasty league. Yes. Uh, all right. Let's uh, let's take one more break so I can tell you guys about Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your bet- betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's uh, MLB season, which we got coming up. We've got golf, PGA, and LIV. We've got Wimbledon coming up. Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, Kate, who is your sell for the Atlanta Falcons offense? I'm going to roll with Cordero Patterson, which doesn't feel like a, like a super hot take here. Um, But I I mean, it, the narrative kind of writes itself here. Cordero Patterson, you don't break out when you're like 47 years old um, for sustained production. I don't think I, the Atlanta Falcons did an excellent job of uh, unlocking him a bit, but I was a little bit concerned about the change in usage that we saw from the first half of the season. Mm -hmm into the back half of the season. A lot of his production was based on his utilization as a receiver, which again, plenty of opportunities there. Um, I think Drake London is going to see his fair share of targets. I think Kyle Pitts is obviously going to see his fair share of targets. 
Um, I'm not saying the opportunity is not going to be there for him to get involved in uh, as a receiver, but I mean, the target share dropped dramatically yeah. from the first half of the season to the second half of the season. Um, you know, I don't know. I've got the numbers right what, here. Final, final eight games of the season. He averaged 2.8 targets per game. That's not good. No. Uh, but it, again, it comes back to the fact that most of his production did come as a receiver. He was one of the best surprises in 2021. But Marcus, I, I'm not, I'm not uh, ready to buy in to the the true Cordero Patterson breakout. I think, you know, the Atlanta Falcons stumbled upon a excellent surprise. Um, but I think we'd be foolish not to reap some value because I mean, it's, you know, I. I I don't know that they necessarily have an answer um, at running mm -hmm. back and Tyler Algier. Um, like I, I like the prospect, but I don't know if he's necessarily got like the size or profile to, to be their RB one, but like none of their rosters figured out. I just don't no. think um, like, I, I don't think we're going to see. It's tough because Patterson I don't be the long-term answer. I don't yeah, think and I, these guys are. And this isn't going to be a high scoring offense. So there's not going to be a lot of touchdown opportunities. And I don't think he's going to be the goal line running back anyways. I actually think that's probably going to be Damian Williams. If I, if I had to guess, uh, I just, it's not Cordero's game. Right. So I think Damian Williams is going to factor in there. I think they're just going to use a bunch of running backs. Patterson will probably lead the team in touches from the backfield, but it's going to be so hit or miss. And there's going to be games where, you know, he does see a lot of volume as a receiver, but Marcus Mariota, if he is a starter, has never been somebody that's that's given a ton of targets to the running backs anyway. So this is, I think this is the last year of Patterson being the entrenched starter. You might as well move on and get whatever you can before kind of the, the value just completely stops. Yeah. Good way. Good way of putting that. Um, And I, I don't know. There, there's just a lot of moving pieces in this offense. It's an interesting offense because they do. They, I do think they're starting to compile some talent, but they've just got so many holes, Marcus. I don't know how long it's going to be before we can see them turn this boat around. But I don't know. Maybe this is the time to buy a couple of these Atlanta Falcons pieces in case they do. Brian Edwards, man, that's the one. He's so cheap right now. It's just the it's a dart throw, right? You're you're just betting on talent at that point. And not only are you betting on talent, you're betting on opportunity. He's gonna get a ton of chances in this offense. Can Marcus Mariota or Desmond Ritter support three fantasy relevant pass catchers? We'll see. We'll see. All right, that is it for today's show. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for making Lockdown Dynasty your first listen today. Now make your second listen to Locked On NFL Podcast. Our national NFL experts and insiders keep fans dialed in with the biggest stories and the latest news from around the league because an offseason doesn't equal a break in the action. We will be back tomorrow previewing the Carolina Panthers. And, man, we go from one dumpster fire to another. Uh, although that offense has a lot more that I'm excited about. There's multiple players in that offense that I want to buy. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that one. Uh, make sure you follow the show uh, on Twitter at Locked on Dynasty. You can follow Kate at FF Ball Blast, and I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Bye, y'all.